Hey, 21.3 is out and we are covering the new feature in Tableau Prep that allows you to add new rows. Now, this sounds like a bit of a strange feature because of course there's lots of ways of adding rows to your data. You can just go ahead and add them to the data set. Um, but typically when we talk about adding rows in data prep, what we're trying to do is trying to create a data structure in Tableau or in another analytical software that we want to use to visualize something. And so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a new feature in prep that's going to help with that. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so I'm doing something different. I'm actually doing this most of this release on a Windows PC. I'm, I'm actually not on a Windows PC. I'm virtualized. I'm on a Mac, but I'm, I'm doing it in a Windows PC for reasons I won't get into. Um, I've got a data set here on my desktop. I'll actually make this available via the link in the description, or if you're looking on tableautim.com, I'll put a link in the blog post that goes with this video. And I'm just gonna drag it into Tableau Prep here. Now, what this is, is essentially some uh, mock data that I created on a site called Mockaroo. Uh, it essentially allows you to create mock data that you can play around with. And it's very simple. It's got a customer ID, a date of birth, and a browser identifier that comes from essentially like browsing a website. And so if I actually click on this uh, clean step here, you'll see that you get a summary of the data set and it looks pretty good. This is what we're going to be working with, okay? Let me just make this fit the full screen. So now we can sort of get a little bit more space to work in. And in order to set this up, what I'm gonna to need to do is create a few calculations. Now, if you wanna jump ahead to see the new features, check out the timestamps and just jump ahead. But we're gonna to need to do some setup to sort of make this use case a little bit more realistic. What I'd like to do is I'd like to add a few days onto the date of birth. Essentially, I want to sort of create like a um, some sort of countdown to the date of birth column in here. So, okay, let's go ahead and create a calculated fill. What I want to do is do a date add here. Let's just go select that there. And what I want to do is add days. So I'll just go here and type day. And what I will also do is I'll say, I wanna add a negative three. So essentially I wanna take away three days from the date of birth. And I wanna do that on the date of birth field. So there we go, that's our additional date of birth. So we'll call this uh, countdown to date of uh, birth. This will create a new date. It actually creates a date time. If we hit apply here, you can see that it actually did create a date just there. You can see it's a date time field. We can change that in the data format just by hitting save here, going down to this little uh, date icon and selecting date. And now you can see we've got the two dates that we want. I'm gonna drag it next to the date of birth column and we're pretty much there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I wanna add a row number then I want to only keep the even numbers. You'll see why I'm doing this when we go to fill the rows a little later on. So let's go ahead and actually create that. Let me just click back in here and create a calculated field. Now, the row number feature in Tableau Prep, I have to say, it's a, it's a little bit clunkier. Like, I just wanna add rows. It shouldn't be sort of this hard. But if you just go ahead here and just type in row number, you'll see that there's a function there and it has to be used in a sort of specific way. So if I was just to take uh, this sort of part of it, for example, it wouldn't, it wouldn't sort of, it wouldn't quite work. So let, let's just let's just type this uh, up uh, properly. So um, the auto completion does actually, um, does actually do this quite nicely. And I have to say there is a bug with a version of prep and counting rows within a partition. Sometimes it doesn't count nested accounts properly. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this actually works. So what I wanna do here is take the customer ID and that's pretty much that done. And then what I'll do is I'll do like a couple of spaces because there's a little bit of nesting going on here inside of the calculation. Then I wanna do an order by function here. And uh, the thing I wanna order by is the date of birth and I wanna do it in ascending order. Hit enter and then on a um, on a new line, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in put in this row number function. So row number will do perfectly fine. And I think I'm pretty much done. I think the only thing I'm missing here is I need to close off one of these, uh, and then it should be valid. Now, in fact, I think what I've done here is I've I've created a bit of a nightmare for myself because I've got. Um, Okay, I think what I've done here is I've, I've got something wrong. If I actually look over here, I think it's a missing this colon, and then I think I have one too many there. So uh, I think I think I also have one too many there. Okay, I think I've sort of managed to fix it. Um, something went weird there when I was typing that out. Um, but anyway, there's our row number calculation. Let's just go ahead and type row number into uh, the field name, hit apply. And you should see here at the bottom that we do get the row number. It's a little bit cramped down here at the bottom, but you can see that the row number works, which is fine. 
So let's hit save. Now that I have the row number, what I'd like to do is create another calculation when I basically want to see um, every number that's divisible by two because I want to keep just the even numbers in my data set. So there's a little trick here. You won't find this function inside of the reference pane. Uh, this actually works in Tableau Desktop too. You can just take the row number Okay, and you can do percentage two, essentially. That will only return a Boolean if uh, the number is divisible by two. So this is actually just a, you know, um, function that's actually pretty common in most databases. So let's just call this even number, hit apply. And now you'll see you get a one and a zero, um, depending on whether the row is divisible by two, zero if it is, and one if it's not. And so what that allows us to do is we can save that. And we're going to basically take all the ones and we're going to get rid of them. I'm just gonna exclude them from our data set, okay? So we've just got rid of half of our customers essentially. And that's fine for this example because I just wanna sort of set this out nicely for us to start getting into the new feature, okay? Let's hit this plus icon. And the first thing you'll see straight away is that we have a new icon. This is a, a new icon. And what's interesting is that it's actually nice to see Tableau Prep adding more functionalities down this list. I really like sort of the visual interface here. I like that things are very clear and simple and it's not too cluttered in a toolbar, a bit like all tricks. Uh, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and select the new rows option. And when we select this drop down, you'll see that we get a new set of options. Now, this is split out into two sort of setups you can either uh, take the values from one field or take the values from a range of, of, of basically two fields so what i'll do first is i'll take the values from one field and what you get is a drop down saying okay which field do you want to base this row fill on and so the first one i'll use is the uh, even number essentially and so what you'll see it do is you'll see oh okay here um it's just just a zero because i've chosen the column where basically it was returning one or zero so there's not sort of much for it to go up here the min and the max here are going to be the same so that's not going to do us too much good instead let's go look at row number and you'll now see the feature starting to do what it should do uh, essentially where you want to be looking is here you kind of get a little preview of what's going to happen and you can see here that this is the new uh, row fill that it's doing essentially and notice that because we've got this setting here where we're going to update the existing field it's actually going to be creating the same column using the same name and replacing the existing one. If you don't want that, if you just go to create a new field, you'll see that it actually creates a new row and it calls it new rows one essentially because it doesn't know what else to call it. So you can see here that it's actually filling the rows, it's essentially looking down the number and it's figuring out, okay, I should see uh, three after number two and it's creating the row to fill that. What that looks like in our data set is if we just go down here to the bottom, you'll see uh, that we also get uh, this little sort of uh, gaps that sort of appear. So you can see here that you get nulls, okay? And again, this is something you can control. If you want Tableau to fill that with data from the previous row, then again, you've got this sort of option here at the very, very bottom. So let's go ahead and click null or zero. You can see here, there's an option to copy from the previous row. If I select that, then you don't get any nulls because essentially if I go back here, you'll see that it, this is the row that it created and it's essentially filling it with this one here. The bold rows are always the rows that it's actually creating. So if I go back and I just null these out, you can see the null rows are the ones in bold. Those are the rows that it's creating. The reason they come before the row that it's sort of copying from is just because of the sort that's going on here. And I, I sort of think it's a strange behavior. It should really show it after all the time, but never mind. Um, we can leave that there. Um, and so, yeah, here you go. You can see this is working really, really nicely. And of course, we do get our new number row here on the right hand side. And we sort of need that to keep the data structure sort of working correctly. So that's the, the first example. You can just see here that I'm just call this uh, sequence, essentially just using a sequence to count in the right order. OK, the next setup is going to be using dates. It's exactly the same, almost like a sequence. But this time we're just going to use a date. So let's just go in here and, and say date. And what we're going to do is take values from one field. And in this case, we're going to use a date of birth column. And so what Tableau is going to do, it's going to look at the minimum and the max. You can see that it's calling that here on the left and here on the right. And it's basically going to try and fill every single date in between those two dates. So you can see that you get a before and after exactly the same as before. Uh, because we've got this update existing field, um, you can see that this is what it's going to create over here on the right hand side. So 
The other cool thing you can do with this is you can change the increments. Let's say you don't want to do it in days. You can do it in uh, weeks and also in months. And notice that it will just add um, the, the beginning of the week as the date. So you can sort of see this uh, column here changing. If we just count months, uh, of course, it just counts up one month. And then the next row is the 0611. So it doesn't need to do anything there because that is actually in the preceding month and so on and so forth. So it guarantees that we have a row of data for every month. And it's basically going to be adding a month to the most recent row that it could see essentially. So it doesn't go to the 1st of October. It goes to the 28th because essentially it's adding a month onto that row. I'd love to be able to sort of uh, have it just, you know, add the first of the month because sometimes you just you just want that as a sort of basic starting point. You don't want some sort of weird data point on the 28th just because your previous row was on the 28th. You can fix that here by just going and sort of uh, creating a date part for the month, essentially, and just using the first of the month. You could even do that in Tableau very easily. It's not a problem. Um, but nonetheless, it's nice that it's here. You can choose all these increments and you can sort of work through that. Now, there is another thing to show you. You don't have to go with the min and max dates. You can actually go in here and type in your own default. Um, the reason this is, is because this little box here is ticked. So if we untick that from use minimum and max, you'll see that we actually get a date picker and we can change these dates around. So let's say you don't want it to start from the first. Let's say you want it to start. Uh, let's let's try and find something that's relevant to this data yet, data set. So you've got 2809 and 1950. What I'll do is I'll try and grab, uh, let's say we start on, uh, let's do this. I don't know if this is an American date format, but let's let's try and figure this out. I hope it knows that I'm in Europe, so I don't do dates the American way. So let's let's say we start data in 2810, 1950. So you can see here that if we go to the start value 28, 10, 1950, it doesn't seem to be sort of observing that. It sort of seems to be starting from the first row that it can see, unless of course these dates are incorrect. So let me let me let me try something different. Let's assume. Well, it can't be. It can't be the um, tenth of uh, a month. It doesn't exist. So this is a this is a proper date format. So it it sort of pays attention to the very first row that it sees, and then it carries on filling after that. I assume. So um, it's not. It's not doing exactly what I thought it would do. In 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 sort of in my eyes, I would have thought that it would completely. If I say the start value is 28, 10, 1950, I would expect it to not start doing row fills from this date. Essentially, ignore anything before that date. But I have to say, this this could just be a bug. Could just be like a weird sort of coincidence of what I'm using today. But again. That's not doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, but nonetheless, what I expect this to do is to, when you hit the start value, it will only start filling rows from that date onwards because you might have some sort of quirk where you need the data to be filled from a certain point in time. So that's really, really cool to see. It's nice to see that it can do date. Now we've got one more format to look at, which is uh, filling between two ranges. So let's go ahead to the new rows option here. And you can see now we have a third option. So I'll say uh, between a range as an option here. Uh, I think I spelled that correctly. So now here, what I'll do is select values uh, ranges from two fields. So value ranges from two fields. I can't talk today. And so you can see here, I've got the two dates that I created. This is why I was sort of needing two dates, because what I'd like to do is do a countdown from uh, the countdown when the countdown starts, which is going to be three days prior to the date of birth to the date of birth. And so what you'll see here is you have a slightly different behavior. If I just sort of call it out here, now it shows us the two columns that we wanted to see. In fact, let me do this. Let me increase the space here so we can see this more clearly. And now you can see here, we've got uh, three columns in this generated rows area. And you can see very, very clearly if I just change this color. So what it does is it takes these two dates and it's going to sort of pad out between those two dates. And it's going to be three days because of course I did a date diff. And so essentially the date of birth is the 28th. And so you can see that that's what it counts to and it counts from the 25th. So you essentially get your four rows of data. This is great. Let's say a marketing team comes to you and say, hey, we'd like you to put uh, this data in the format that we can load into our database because this company is going to be using that database to mail out people on a certain day. So you could go and do this sort of fill rows mechanism to essentially count out four days before a certain point. Now, realistically, that's only useful if you're going to do something on every single day, but it just gives you options being able to really control what this fill rows function does. Do you want it to just fill rows for your data set 
or fill rows for everything else. Now in this particular use case, this is actually an example where I will ask Tableau to make sure that it fills the preceding rows with the data from that record so that when I then load this, I can see that this is all data related to the same record. And so what I'll do here is I'll go to what value should uh, your new rows have? And I'll say copy from previous row. And now you'll see that it does indeed fill the previous rows uh, with the new data from the first row that it was essentially uh, filling from. So that's pretty much it. Sort of three really nice use cases straight out of the box for this feature. And um, there's probably more use cases that I haven't thought of here, um, but they're nonetheless really, really nice. The other thing I will say about this is that, look, of course, if you decide to make any other change in any one of these steps, you of course still can. Let's say I don't need my even numbers column and I go ahead and remove it. Uh, those changes still work. So what's really nice about Tableau Prep is that you can do the change where it makes the most sense. So if you do this fill date and then you want to remove something because cosmetically you created it there, you can just go ahead and do that. If you need to create a calculated field in this step, you can just go ahead and do that. Let's just create a, a simple text field here called test and uh, we'll call it calculation one, apply and save. You can see that over here, you can see that these two changes are actually stored in this particular step. So I really like this idea that you're not being constrained. You can do the, the sort of uh, data prep step that's required in that step without having to sort of string out a bunch of tools just for, you know, for a single use case. So that has this effect of making your workflow a little bit neater to look at and a little bit more tidy, but it still keeps everything visually sort of detailed and explained. And obviously when you click out like this, it keeps everything nice and nice and clear. So that's pretty much it. That's a, that's a really nice sort of uh, quality of life improvement for Tableau Prep. I really like it. This is going to make working with Tableau data sources a lot easier. If you have these two tools, Tableau Prep and Tableau Desktop or Tableau Web Authoring, if you're sort of in the in the web authoring um, mindset, then this is going to be quite cool because you can solve a lot of problems, especially a lot of problems that would have typically involved scaffolding data. But then at the same time, with things like the data model and this capability, you can really, really go really far in terms of making this work out. The best example of this I can think of is support ticket data where you're trying to always figure out how many days was the ticket open for, okay? And essentially, when a ticket is open, you're essentially going to want to fill until the date today because the ticket is open. And when the ticket is closed, you're going to want to fill the date between the days that it's open. And so what you can do with this, which is really, really nice, you can feed Tableau Prep with all your support, uh, with all your support uh, desk data, We'll have a start date and an open uh, start date and an end date in terms of when the ticket was open, when it was closed. You can fill in between each and every step when it was escalated. And so what you can do is you can create this really cool visualization where you can sort of show the cumulative total of open tickets at different statuses and so on and so forth. What I'll probably do is I'll have to create a custom data set just to show you this example and how easy Tableau Prep makes that kind of question. Before in Tableau Desktop, you had to do something really nasty, which was to union the data on itself and snapshotting, uh, you know, the dates and saying, oh, this is the creation date. This is the tier one date. And so you'd create these sort of snapshot, union them on top of each other. Then you'd be able to do your analysis. But on top of that, you'd also have this complexity that you'd always have to have the full range of data in your sort of window for the running total of open tickets to work. So if you had three years worth of data, you had to figure out a way of keeping three years worth of data in view. With this, you don't need to because you essentially have all the data on any given day sort of built into the data set. So you can just look on a specific day and ask yourself, how many tickets are open and just get the answer really super simple so i've just talked myself into doing another video on that particular use case but nevertheless uh, uh thanks for watching uh, and i'll catch you in the next video and uh, i love that the uh, little steam popped up uh, as i was doing this video it's kind of a funny side effect of doing it on windows you get all the junk you can normally sort of isolate uh, elsewhere but nevertheless thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video